Hey guys, I'm here with Bay. Say hi, Bay. Hi, Bay. And her the link to her channel is in the description. She makes content every day, so you should go watch her. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why that's funny is because she's uploaded in five fucking months. Has it been that long? Yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I'm pregnant, damn it. <laughs> it's okay, she's been busy. But um, today we're going to talk about Moon Call by Patricia Briggs. And um, I think we should just start off by saying that we both really liked it. And yes. I've read the series so far through Fire Touch, and I'll probably just re listen to all of them um, as we do this because I think we both like it enough to review the entire series. Yeah. Um, but if you haven't read the books and you want to, uh, spoilers, all of them, because we're going to be talking about everything. Yes, we are. Um, so uh, we're not leaving any stone unturned. Um, Unless we forget about it. And there are also probably spoilers in this for the second book, I believe. Yeah, we'll probably talk about the second book a little bit because I'm three quarters through that one. Yeah, and I mean, we're not going to talk about the plot or anything in it, but there are certain little things in it that I think we can talk about. Probably, yeah. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get like the rating out of the way overall. How, like, what, out of five stars, how many stars would you give it? Um,. Probably about four and a half because I wasn't like I re because I did audiobook and I think you did too. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't dreading re listening to it today, so that was good. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't either. And I, um, I reread some stuff, some books, and I've or I've tried to, and I've like totally put them down because I was like, I fucking can't. I don't want to reread yeah. this, um, but I would give it about 4.5 stars out of 5, too. That's about where I'm at. Um, so, uh, the Magister said, great series. I suggest reading the spinoff Alpha Omega for more of the world. Um, yeah, once we're done this, we might, if we like yeah. it, if there's suggestions, we will. The other thing we were talking about is that we're going to like, since we like this book a lot, and I like her writing, this isn't probably going to be as much fun to listen to as if we read <laughs> shitty books. So if you guys have shitty books, ones that are not too long for, that we yeah. can read, we'll intersperse those so that we can do more fun ones <laughs> rather than just being like, I like it. All right, bye. Um, <laughs> so let's, yeah, let's start off with what we like. Well, should we just give a quick rundown of what it is for those that haven't read it yet? Yeah. So let's just start off with the world. So um, this is a world that is stuffed with supernatural creatures um, to the brim. And it's done well. <laughs> yeah. It's <coughs> – sorry. Yeah, it feels oh, organic. True Blood is a series that we could fucking read. I don't that want to. That sucks. Okay, that's fine. Um, sorry. <laughs> it, 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 like, what I'm going to compare it to is True Blood. And True Blood <laughs> is... True Blood, the way they do it was garbage. The way, they, the way they do it was garbage. Sorry. The way they did it was crap. It was just too much, and it just kept coming, and you were just like, can you stop that? Um, whereas... <laughs> With this one, you have a bunch of you have a couple of categories of people. So you have fae, which are just kind of like nondescript things that can do magic. You have witches, but there aren't a lot of witches, so no. it's not a big deal. Um, and then there's vampires, and I think the way that the vampires are done is interesting. Um, yeah, I think it gets way more into the vampire lore and Bloodbound. Yeah, and the, so when I we like get the vampire, to... sorry. Oh, I was just saying I like the vampire lore in the series. I do too. I like the way it's done. We'll we'll actually get into the vampire lore in Bloodbound because it's 
Bloodbound's the second book, by the way. Um, when we review Bloodbound, we'll get into the vampire lore because that's where it's relevant. Um, but there's also werewolves, and I think the way werewolves are done is interesting. Um, and then there's what Mercy is, and Mercy, Mercedes Athena Thompson is the MC, the main character, our protagonist. Um, and she can shift. And into she's not identity. awful. And she's not awful. Oh my god, I cannot tell you how many series I've read where I'm like, I like the other characters. I want to kill the protagonist. <laughs> I actually root for Mercy to live, which is like more than I can say. That's for that's, most that's massively read. high praise. <laughs> Such high praise coming from me because so many books I read, I'm just like, you know what? If the protagonist could die, the series be would be better. Great. Yeah. Like, if you can just get rid of the fucking main character, I'd be a happy camper. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and she's a coyote shifter. And the coyote shifters, um, it doesn't hurt for them to shift. If you've read part one of the Volk saga, which I wrote, and the link is in the description if you want to read it, go read it. It's good from what I've been told. Anyway, um, it's kind of like how my wolves shift. <laughs> It's it's totally painless, no crunchy bones. It's just a magical shift. Whereas with the werewolves, um, it's more it's of like, like a the classical minute process. Yeah, it's more of like the classical process where um, it's a it's a more physical change rather than like a straight up magical one. But there's a bit um, of magic in there beyond the changing because like they change weight and everything as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the other thing about the werewolves is that it's hard for them to control their the wolf is set sorry the wolf is separate from the human so once you become a werewolf you're a little schizophrenic <laughs> um, <laughs> but and it, but it's not like a lot of series where they so harp on not being able to control the wolf it's pretty much like if you have a good alpha within 2 months you don't need an alpha anymore which is good because it adds struggle without it being annoying and yeah. hindering the plot. So it's done well. Um, and the packs also have like pack bonds, like magical pack bonds um, that are interesting, that are way more in depth later in the series, but it's, but it's, but it's good. Um, they're done well. And I also like that the wolves kind of look like puppies in a way. Yeah. Like it's fur coloring. <laughs> Yeah, um... Like, the biggest macho werewolf has, like, a little tuft of white on the end of his tail, like, jokes, <laughs> and I think that's fucking cute. <laughs> yeah, and one thing I found hilarious, this one, this bit's from Bloodbound, but it's it's not about the story at all, it's just a little side note, but that was saying about how, like, a lot of the werewolves wear collar, like, have collars, so they can... yeah go out in the city as, and pretend to be dogs. <laughs> well, there's also magic. I don't know if this is explicitly stated in Moon Called. I don't think it is. See, some of the lore stuff, I'm like... Um, some of the werewolf stuff, like, some of the lore stuff, I forget where it's revealed, but apparently there's magic that makes somebody see, like, a massive werewolf and go, Puppy! Or something like that. Yeah, so, I think... Well, that, I haven't got into that bit yet, so that's a bit later. But yeah. it's it's at least implied, though. Yeah. Um, the other thing about the world is that there. So in a lot of urban fantasy, you get a lot of people like, "How do the humans not fucking know?" <laughs> like I get it in the Middle Ages, but we have cameras, we have forensic. How do the humans not fucking what? And That's one thing one, that I'm struggling with in regards to creating my world. I'm like, fuck, how can I make it so they're, you know, inconspicuous? <laughs> um, SDA, I think you'll really like the Alpha Omega, uh, Alpha and Omega series. Yeah, I, I really do want to read it. Um, we're going to finish this series first as much as we can. Well, because, like, I think that she's still writing it. Um. And then we'll move on to that one. 
interspersed with shitty books. Um, yeah. Because like I said, those are more fun. Now that this isn't fun to talk about, it's, I think it's just more fun for you guys to listen to us, bitch. Because um, we get to go on rants if it's crap. Yeah. Um, but either way, so where was I? Forget. Fuck. I don't know. We are talking about, um, oh, oh yeah, how the humans dead. don't. Yeah. So the Fae came out in the 80s. And I don't know if it's supposed to be analogous to gay people coming out. But either way, the Fae come out in the 80s. And, no, don't be sorry. It's not your fault. Um, um, it's like, I like just woke up, so don't, don't worry. Um, uh, I don't mind suggestions at all. Like, if there are stuff that you guys want us to read so that we can review it and talk about it, please, by all means, you know, put it in chat or comment down below. Um, so, <laughs> um, the Fae came out in the 80s, and there are lesser Fae that aren't, like, a big deal, and then there are the Grey Lords, and the Grey Lords are, like, the people that rule over the Fae, or the Fae that rule over the Fae. Um, and they have, like, lesser Fae come out, like, garden sprites and shit like that. So, they came out, there were riots and everything. Um, and then, at the end of book one, they, Bran, which is the Maroc. So, okay, sorry. It's like, I don't know what order to explain all of this in. He's the Alpha Alpha. Of North America. Yes. Not of, like, anything else. But he's the Alpha Alpha of North America, so Canada, U.S., and Mexico. Um, and he's decided that he's going to bring the wolves out in a couple months. Um, and the pacing... The, well, okay. So when we talked about House of Night, we bitched about the pacing of the books, the spacing of the books, I should say. Oh, God, yes. Ugh. Because the, because the spacing of the books is, like, the books take place over a couple of days, and then the next book is two days later. Whereas in this one, the space between the first and second book is about six or seven like months. Six months. Yeah. Like, the first book takes place in November, the second book takes place in the summer. Yeah, and and I can't remember what time frame the first book covers, but it, it didn't seem... It's a couple it, of days. Yeah, and if it, like, with that, it kind oh, of fits. yeah, it's, sorry. It fits huh? over the week of Thanksgiving. Yeah, and and the pacing and everything works out like really well, like for, the t for that time frame. It didn't feel like too much was happening unreasonably, yeah, in such a short period of time. If that makes right. sense. Um, and so, so the pacing is good. So I guess now might be a good time to get into characters. So we'll start with yes. Mercy. You want to talk about Mercy a yeah, little bit? So. <laughs> um, um, yeah, go ahead. Well, did you want to go or do you want me to go? You can go. Okay. Will the thing that annoys us both, we'll address that later. Yeah, we'll talk about the <laughs> shit we don't like later. Um, but with Mercy, I, I really like her. She's fully aware of what her limitations are and she and she's not so uh she's while she wants to be involved in stuff and everything it's not like you know i am woman hear me raw let me you know why can't i play with the big boys she's like she's like yeah i get it i'm the only advantage i have is i'm a bit quick <laughs> well yeah so i guess we should so while she gets too. annoyed the werewolves yeah. are, like, really big and strong, and, like, they heal fast. Mercy is basically a coyote with the... She's basically a human that can change to a coyote. She can't heal fast. She's not immortal like the wolves are. She's not stronger or anything like that. So, sorry, go ahead. She's got some heightened senses, and that's about it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, she understands... While she doesn't necessarily always like decisions and doesn't necessarily always listen, she also mm -hmm. is realistic about 
everything to I guess to an extent. Um, and she's not oh, she's not a whiny little bitch, which is really <laughs> like she'll nice. Complain, I know, and like while she'll complain about stuff, like it's yeah, like it's kind of like yeah, I get it. <laughs> um. And because she was raised by a pack of werewolves as well, I guess a lot of her flaws in terms of wanting to do more for, for the pack and stuff kind of makes sense because <laughs> she was raised in a pack. So, uh, so Magnificent Bastard said it's worse. It's a werewolf young adult series. And just to correct that, it's a, I'm not going to... It's I'm an not adult like series. Yeah, I'm not upset with you. It's just it's an adult series. Um, Mercy is 30 or so. Yeah, give or take a year or two. And there's no high school. And the teenagers in the she's series actually act like... Oh, yeah, she's a, she's a mechanic and she owns her own shop. Um, <laughs> she actually acts like an adult and everything, so it's... Just to correct that, it's... Yeah. Oh, I mean, but I can forgive and also her... Think it, yeah, no, that makes sense why you would think yeah. that. Yeah, and um, with um, Phobos Media just instinctively hating werewolf and vampires in fiction, that's a fair criticism, but this series is actually done pretty well. Yeah, and her writing's good and engaging, and her pacing is good. You know, like you said last night to me, it slows down when it needs to, it speeds up when it needs to, and it doesn't waste your time. Yeah. I didn't feel disengaged once reading the book. Yeah, real quick. I always thought YA was about the target audience, not the content matter. Yeah, it is, but the target audience for this would be adults, not teenagers. Um, yeah. It, I Like, my mom, she's... Fuck, how old is my mom? She's 52. This is her favourite series. I can see like, why. It's, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's been bugging me for like three years or something to read this. I've lost count of how long it's been. Um, it might not be that long, but ever since she first like got a quarter of the way through the first book, she's like, you need to read the Mercy Thompson books, and I just haven't, <laughs> and I, <laughs> um, I haven't told her yet. <laughs> the coyote thing is also a Native American thing. Yeah, because she's half woo-woo. Yeah, she's half woo woo. Um, so that's another thing. But and Faye are European, so she has like a it's like a regional magic system. And I enjoy yeah. that. That's what my books are. They there's a regional magic system in them, so I Yes same. I like it. Hmm? Yeah, well it just doesn't make it just doesn't make sense for you know magical creatures to just be all over the world unless you know it kind of fits with the thing like I can understand like things like fairies or something mm -hmm. being everywhere but not shape-shifting coyotes yeah um yeah so did, I think we covered everything with Mercy yeah um, she's she, she's pretty she, cool yeah she's she's cool <laughs> Um, she's not too whiny, which is nice. It's interesting that it's like, praise about mercy. She's not awful. Yay! <laughs> um, um, and there, so, there is sorry. one thing about mercy, but we're going to get into that later. Yeah, we're going to get so. into the stuff we don't like later. Um, and it's pretty much one thing. <laughs> yeah, it's one thing. Uh, so... Harry Vegas asked, hmm, "What makes the series more adequately targeted to not to a not a ton of romance in the first book, and the romantic arcs take a while, which is something that is not conducive to YA." Um, yeah. The other thing um, is just the also, writing style. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was also just going to say, more or less, what you said. Like it's, it's. Young adult often holds your hand yeah. through everything, whereas this just expects you to be like, be like, no, keep up, bitch. <laughs> this is happening. Yeah, young adult slaps you in the face with exposition. It's just the way in which it's written. It's kind of how, um, 
young adult is written more simply and um, like the writing style is a lot more simplistic. It's much more handholdy. The pacing is very different in young adult. Yeah. Um, the characters are more, in young adult novels, the characters tend to be more caricatures. So you have the classical bitchy butt. Yeah. It's just like a bitch. Um, you also have really stupid, 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 fucking stupid MCs. Um, MCs in young adult also tend to be more bland and more project yourself onto them rather than an actual fucking character. And they also tend to be more whiny. Um, MCs tend to reflect depressed teenage girls in young adult. And so there's just yeah. a big difference in the way that the books are actually written. And it's kind of well, hard again, to quantify think, it because if I, well, you're writing... I, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say, yeah, I think the most important thing is um, young adult tends to have an MC that it they're, they're a bland per, like person with no personality other than the fact that they whine a lot and fall in love in yeah. 10 seconds. And this one right, doesn't. and and like I said, the characters are much more caricature-like. Um, the stories are often a lot more simplistic. The plot to this yeah. is complicated, and in my opinion, in Moon Called, it's actually a t it's a teensy weensy bit too much with how complicated the plot is. And in subsequent uh, books in this series, the plots are still very interesting and very engaging and thick but not so busy like they are in the first one so there is improvement yeah. book to book if that makes sense yeah i think i well, i think part of why the plot in um moon cold is a bit hectic as well is probably because she's one thing I found is she tries to work her exposition into the plot instead mm -hmm. of saying exposition, then plot. Um, yeah. So, like, to demonstrate the wolf hierarchy system, for example, with um, with Bran? Bran? Mm -hmm. Is it an A or an E? I don't know. Oh, regardless. Head wolf, dude. Um they go there like that's how they it's an a we are a that's how she, yeah so with bran that's how she expositions his role in it by taking them there um i like it i'm like and i think when you're establishing a world without trying to do too much exposition you do have to have a bit of a full plot if that makes sense yeah um so let's, okay, so to keep on the theme of characters, there's also Z, and Z is a <laughs> fae. He's, I love And Z. a lot of the fae, I like, I like Z a lot too. A lot of the fae um, can't handle metal. They can't handle cold iron. But Z is a metal smith. They call him a gremlin earlier in the series. Um, but then they kind of drop it later once Mercy learns more about oh. the fae. Um, so this is from her perspective, by the way. We probably should have said that in the first place. It's, uh, written from first person. Um, but Z is one of the more powerful Fae. He's out, but he owned, uh, the garage that Mercy owns before she did, taught her how to be a mechanic. Um, and then once he was supposed to come out as a Fae, um, he sold her the garage. And he works on the cars occasionally and helps her out. But that's basically who Z is. Um, and he's a really interesting character, and I like what she does with him later in the series. Oh, does he get more plot stuff? Oh, yeah, he gets a lot more. Um, oh, that's exciting. So do you want to take... Who should we go with next? Do you want to um, take Adam? Yeah, we'll do Adam. Um, Adam is the alpha of her local pack The Columbia thing. Basin pack. That one. Yeah, she lives in oh, eastern Washington. Yeah. Um, 
and he also lives behind her. And they have this weird sexual tension thing happening and have done so for quite some time apparently. Um, and uh, I really like Adam. He's, he's, you know, girl enough when he needs to be and he's soft enough, especially regarding his daughter. He gets very soft and protective of her, um, which is cute. I really like um, the relationship that they have. Yeah. Oh, that just reminded me of something else that I didn't like. So I'm just going to write it down before I forget. Okay. Can you finish with Adam while I write down? Um. So Adam, yeah, Adam lives behind her and they have like this thing where, um, so her trailer was there first and then he <laughs> bought the property behind her and built a house and he bitches at her a lot. So what she did is she took this old shitty junky VW rabbit that doesn't run and that she just uses her parts, put it in her backyard and just like makes it more shabby as she gets more and more irritated. <laughs> and she like takes tires off of it and like puts graffiti. It's just really funny. Um, yeah. She's very passive that aggressive would, with that call. Yeah. It's something that I would do. Um, and Adam doesn't like it and it's just funny. Um, <laughs> so what more to say about Adam? Um, there is sort of an escalating romance between them, but mm -hmm. it's not rushed. And, I, and that's really a good thing. Um, yeah. Because, like I said, this takes place over about a week. And if they, yep. like, suddenly fell in love over a week, that'd be stupid. Um, so there's a tiny romantic subplot between them, but it's not a lot, and which it's, is good. And it's pre-established as well. Like, it's been a tension thing that's been going on yeah. since he got divorced. I will say that there are kind of mixed messages with it. Yeah. Um, because rereading it, I was wondering... It's... It's kind of unclear whether you're supposed to hate him or there's supposed to be sexual tension. That part is definitely unclear because the thing that, okay, the thing that kind of didn't line up in the first book was that with Adam was that she hates his guts and they argue a lot and it seems like actual malice. But the second there's something wrong in his house, she's, like, flipping out and going over there. Yeah. It's, and so... Um, yeah, it seems like, um... Like, I think what they... Tr like, I think the whole point of having him leave... Oh, because the first mention of Adam is, um... She comes home and her cat's in a cat carrier with a note yeah. saying, you know, next time I see your cat, I'm going to eat it. Yeah. Um, but then she really, like, but then she can smell that, you know, the cat had probably been chilling out with him for about, like, for a couple hours or something before he did that. Yeah. So I think that that was probably meant to establish that it's s surface level, like, Gurness, but underneath it all, he's actually quite fond of her. I think that was yeah, supposed to just, try and make you think that. It just doesn't read quite that way. It doesn't, but I it's think a that minor was grievance. And it's not because it's like she didn't hold your hand, it's just the way that she very clearly establishes their relationship. Suddenly, she's like so into going to get him and like being like we have to say that and what the fuck and you're just kind of like all right i thought you didn't like him but okay <laughs> like given the relationship that they are established as having in the first like two chapters of the book she should be like oh thank fuck he's dead um <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's like you said it's kind of like she like lays it on thick but that's okay um it, it's a very minor complaint and it doesn't really ruin anything for me because I've read through the ninth book 
already. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's not, like I said, not a big deal, but it's just something that's kind of a weird discrepancy with the plot. Um, yeah. So, okay, I guess we should go to Samuel next. Oh. Uh, I'm not that fond of Samuel. I'm not either. Um, I don't like him. Either. Oh, thank God. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't so, hate him, but I'm kind of just like, uh, uh, that's kind of my opinion of him. <laughs> so the pack that she grew up with is the Moroc, and the Mor it's the Moroc's pack, and they're in like a little shitty town in Montana to stay away from everybody. And but every. Everyone in the town, or even the humans, pretty much all know that werewolves are a thing. Yeah, it's basically the wolf town. Um, and yeah. Samuel is the Moroc's son. And Mercy and he almost got together. Like, they almost ran away to wit together and eloped. Um, but Bran stopped 16. when she was 16. But now, see, if it was about that, that would be a young adult novel. Um, sorry. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but Bran stopped them because Samuel really – so werewolves, female werewolves can't have kids because the change every full moon is really violent. They can change other times too, but they have to change on the full moon. And if and you are a – Yeah, it kills the kid. And if you were a um, human mated to a werewolf, you could have kids, but they'd have to be human kids. So he figures that since she's a coyote and she doesn't have to shift, she could carry werewolf babies to full term. Yep, or human or coyote shapeshifters. Like, it, yeah. it would be... Because more or less as well, um, one of the, the other things is a werewolf... Because um, werewolves aren't born, they're made. And um, a... Oh, well, they can be born in Bran's case. No. Um, um, was it Charles. Bran? No, it's Charles. Oh, Charles. My bad. Charles. Um, uh, so Charles. Bran fell in love with an Indian, and the Indian had magic and was able to stop her change for nine months. She died. But That's right. Yep. Charles was born. Um, yeah. So, um, but yeah, a human can only carry a fully human child. Like they, they miscarry um, any werewolf kids. But so Samuel is um, Bran's firstborn son, and Bran is old as fuck. Like he's. Isn't he like? They don't tell you how old. Fifteen hundred ish. Yeah, about. Um, so, and Samuel is his firstborn, and he was born while Bran was still human. So Samuel is, like, for all intents and purposes, by that point, comparatively, they're the same fucking age. Yeah. Um, so, they're the same age. Um, and so Samuel wants, only wants to elope with Mercy because she can have his babies. Yep, because he, he doesn't want to watch any more of his children die. So, <coughs> um, Bran tells Mercy that, and Mercy does the smart thing and runs away. Um, Good girl. But then, <laughs> yeah, but then um, Mercy, uh, so because of the plot, she ends up going back to Aspen Creek, which is in Montana, which is where all the wolves are. The Moroc Pack is, anyway. Um, and they end up meeting up with Samuel again. And by the end of the book, he's living in her trailer. And I got to be honest, Samuel, I don't like Samuel. And what uh -huh. I like even less is that he creates this weird ass fucking love triangle that they drag out. How and long does it get dragged out about for? About three books. Yeah. Which is a long ass love triangle. I'm sorry, but ugh, I hate love triangles. Um, I like I said, spoilers for the series. She ends up with Adam, which is fucking clear. But oh my god, the waiting is awful. And like, I could deal with a slow love story. That doesn't bother me at all. But for fuck's sake, love triangles drive me nuts. Especially 
when it's clear what's going to happen and when I don't like the other guy and I just want him to fuck off. And later in yeah, the series, he, he does fuck off. Like, he just kind of doesn't come back and I'm like, woohoo! No, good. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think one of the most frustrating things about the love triangle as well is Samuel the Human... I, don't, I just said human really weird. Um, Samuel the human isn't in love with her. Um, but Samuel the wolf thinks of her as his mate. I think your phone is causing, like, interference with your mic or something. I don't know. Oh. Oh. Is that – is it better or – Yeah, we'll see. It was just kind of making, like, weird crackly noises. Um Oh, that's, I don't know that's if it's actually why or not, but anyway. Um, um, often if my phone goes too close to this mic, it messes up, so that could be it. Um, well, but the yes. thing that's odd about that, just as like a, again, we're going to talk, this threads into the rest of the series, but you'll get over it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they establish later that they're obviously not meant to be mates. And yeah. they also kind of imply that Samuel's wolf knows that they're not mates. Which is bizarre, because in the first book, she does a thing, because Samuel's all... Rah, 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 rah. And it's like, she does like a matey thing. They don't like fuck or anything, but she just like turns into a coyote and sort of crouches. And Oh, doesn't she like, like expose a belly and stuff yeah, to yeah, try yeah. and... Yeah. To Calm him down. The wolf, and supposedly the wolf is just like, oh, she's my mate, sniff, sniff, or whatever. Um, <laughs> and I don't like it because I don't like Samuel. I don't – Samuel would work really well in a YA book because he's very whiny and irritating. So. Yep. Actually, yeah, going back to that. The thing that changes this from a young adult to an adult is she ends up with the person she should end up with. Yeah. Um, and Samuel is a whiny little bitch oh. throughout um, the series. And so when he fucks off, it's like, yay. Yeah, because um, a big part of... Um, him is, um, I was about to say, sorry, I'm mental blanking. It's okay. Um, I don't like how they also try and, because he, he doesn't act in a lot of, um, his interactions and stuff. He doesn't act like he's like this big softy. But then they're always talking about how he's this big softy. Yeah. Like like how he used to like go down to the local primary school and let all the like kindergartners play pony on his back and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that but then I don't really see any of that with his actual scenes. That sort of comes out later. Does it? Yeah, it does. Well that's um, good. He gets less unlikable, but then he becomes less likable again. Especially the fifth <laughs> book. The fifth book, he's a fucking... I just want to smack him. Um, the whole fucking time. And I just want to be like Edna Mode and be like, Pull yourself together! Because he's just... <laughs> um, <laughs> he's probably one of my least favorite characters. Um, so, yeah. We'll talk... Like I said, we're going to go over the plot and everything, too. So, um... Very in-depth reviews you get here. Uh, so Jessie is Adam's daughter, and I fucking adore Jessie. She's a little fucking she's, smart ass bitch. She and I love is, it. And she's 15, and what I love about her is that she acts 15, which is yeah, great, like, I think. Yeah, because she lives in a different state or something, doesn't she? Well, she lives in Eugene, Oregon, so she lives with Jeff Holiday, um, with her mom. And <laughs> 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 and and what she does is like whenever she visits Adam, she'll dye her hair crazy colors just so that he has something to complain yeah. at. And it's cute. And their relationship, the relationship between Adam and Jesse, is great. 
and Jesse notices the car or whatever, and she's like, next time dad does something stupid and you paint graffiti on it, can I help? <laughs> and I love her. She's great. And she's not stupid yeah. either. And later in the plot, when she's a little bit older, she's a little bit more involved in the action, but not to a point where it's ridiculous. And yeah, I like that I've, she I've, acts I've, like a teenager. I've, Sorry. I've got a question about her. Okay. Now, I, I, based on what you've just said, this doesn't, at, at least it hasn't happened, but do you reckon there'll come a stage where Adam would ever let her attempt to I change? I don't know. I, I doubt, don't think he would. I doubt he'd be okay with that. Now, what can happen is, like, you could attempt the change when you're old, and it's not like a vampire where you just freeze in time. It actually repairs you your body. So, like, if you have cancer, if you're, like, an 80-year-old dying of cancer and you become a werewolf, you turn back into basically, like, somebody who looks like they're, like, 25. And we know this because he's mentioned in the first book. So. The vet. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty much established in the first book. So, but I really like Jessie. She's done well. She's not in it too much, but she's she's a presence. So, it's not, like, with Adam, it's not as though Jessie isn't there. So it's not like yeah. when stuff happens, there's no consequences to Jesse. Um, so that's good. So moving on, I guess we'll go to Sorry. Bran. <laughs> yeah. Bran's the Maroc, and he's old as fuck. And I like Bran, sort of. He's kind of a dick, but he needs to be a dick. But he's a good dick, yeah. I guess. <laughs> and... <laughs> I, I I like that he um I like his really his dynamics with Mercy. He acts like you too. know like he's he's like this little like he's just like a sweet uncle slash dad thing, and he's a sweet stepdad type figure. And then, yeah. but then he gets all like grr. <laughs> And yeah, he cute. has, like, grr moments, and he has, like, good moments. So there's not a lot to talk about with Bran right now. Um, yeah, he's not really like in the first he's, book. Because he's sort of, like, an off-in-the-distant presence. And he doesn't stop being a presence, but he's not super heavily involved in the rest of the books anyway. Yeah. Is, so. it, is it ever established if he's actual, actually psychic? No. But it is sort of established that, like, he's probably not psychic. He's probably just smart and knows shit. Like, he's seen some shit. Yeah, well, I imagine being um, a wolf for a millennium and a half, give or take, a century, would probably make you pretty in tune to when people are full of shit. Yeah, um, and werewolves are also good at, at detecting lies as well just because of, like, kind of like how a lie detector like, goes for pulse rates, sweat, and all that kind of stuff. Same thing with werewolves. Um, so we've established, I guess, a lot of major characters. Let's just jump to Daryl. Oh, wait, we didn't do the gays. Yeah, we're about to do those. Oh, okay. So going down Adam's pack hierarchy, there's Daryl, who is his second. He's his second. Um, and Daryl's kind of a... He's not, like, a dickwad. She sets him up as a red herring, but it's a crappy red herring. Yeah, it's more or less like, because Adam gets attacked, more or less. Um, yeah. And, yeah, Mercy is like, I, oh, crap. Daryl kind of, she, they never actually explained what he meant when he said, now's not the time. Um, I don't think it really meant anything. I think it was just a way to cause a red herring, but it's not a red herring that you ever really believe. Yeah, it, it's it's a reason for her to go to the um to Brains Pack and not. But they know, do also. It's, it's, it's how they bring Sam, Samuel into it. But the plot is also chastised for the shitty red herring, which I guess makes up for it. But whatever. Yeah. Um. So. Um. But yeah, he's just abrupt and distant. Yeah, he becomes a major character later. Um, 
So Warren is Adam's third, and he's a he's a gay werewolf. I love Warren. Which Warren's is bad. Gay, which is bad because basically, if you have a boner, werewolves know it because they can sense that you want to hump a tree. Um, okay. And because Warren <laughs> is a gay and he wants to hump men, the other males are like, Ugh, and it's a problem. Yeah. And I because, just, like... And because I guess werewolves off um, in this series kind of embody toxic masculinity in terms of you know sh like sh societal structure and gurness and you know like alpha male and beta male etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, yeah having having a guy around that gets a hard on for you is kind of threatening to your position. Yeah, it's and really, a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then there's Kyle, which is his human boyfriend. And I like Kyle, too. Yeah, because he's, he's, like, actually, like, he's a fag, and it's great. <laughs> but he's not so gay that you're just, like, fucking kill me. He's not Damien in House of Night. <laughs> no. Right, he's just like, I'm gay. Did you know that I want to sit on a cock? Like, it's not like that. Um. No, He's done it's, well. oh, oh, yeah, because um, one thing that I really like the scene where he meets Samuel for the first time, and Samuel's kind of given him a look, and he thinks it, Samuel's giving him a look because, you know, he's gay. And that's not why Samuel's actually uncomfortable, but he's like, fuck it. And then he goes and, like, intentionally hits on him. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Just to try um, and make him more uncomfortable. Are there any other characters that we need to go over? Um, not really. No, because even the I guess the um, we'll talk about Mac when we start antagonist. With... Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, the actual antagonist. <sighs> I don't like that she made me feel sorry for him at the end. <sighs> I don't either. Um, and like I, I said, I don't like feeling bad for the baddie. It's Sorry, kind of go. funny because given that we gave the book 4.5 stars, um, the, the plot is muddy. Like, really muddy. So. But the pacing makes up for it. Yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know how she it got doesn't... away with such a muddy plot <laughs> when... I think it's just because the writing is good, the characters are good, you're, it's engaging anyway. Um, you don't realize until you actually try and analyze the plot that it is? Yeah, which is, like I said, I still give it 4.5 stars, but just understand that this is the first book and the plot is muddy and she definitely improves over the next, over the series. The series is fantastic. Um, and I said at a stream a while ago, maybe not a while ago, that I don't really have a favorite author because there's not like an author that I just want more from that author. I'm kind of changing my answer. I think if I like another series that she's Ooh. done, she might be my favorite author. Oh so, God, this is, this is a big day. It is a big day. Because, uh, like I said, my standard for, like, favorite author is that I want to follow the author's work because there are a lot of authors where I've liked a series and then I go to another one and I'm like, bleh. <laughs> I didn't like it. Um, and I only care about a series. Whereas with this yeah. one, I'm like, I want more from the author. So if another series by her is good, I'm going to be excited. Um, so, anyway. Uh, so I guess we should get yep. into the plot. Wait, we spent wait, one second. Um, Warren is gay like Mercy is straight. It's just a part of him. It's not emphasized or really even a major part of his character. I wouldn't say it's... I would agree that it's not really a major part of his character, but it's heavily emphasized multiple times. Yeah, it, and it's really emphasized with Kyle, too, because Kyle's family, like, disowned him, and so you have to go through all that. So yeah. it's... It is heavily emphasized. Um, but but not by Warren, but by 
the constant need to say that he's gay and why that's a bad and why which he's is, so lucky to still be alive. Which I think <laughs> is a little overdone. Mm-hmm. It's And we'll get into the stuff we don't like after we talk about the plot. So, yeah. all right, so the plot opens with her in her garage and this kid comes who's a werewolf and his name is Mac. His name is actually Alan Mackenzie Fraser, but you learn that later. Um, and he goes by Oh, Mac. my God. How do you remember everyone's full names? Well, because they're just like, Alan Mackenzie Fraser. Alan McKenzie. And I'm like, okay, all right, calm down. That's um, true. <laughs> and because I listened to it yesterday. So. <laughs> I couldn't remember his last name, so you did better than me. <laughs> so his name's Mac. And oh. I like Mac, and I'm sad that they did what they that she did what she did with him. Like, I kind of wish, like, even in the ninth book, I wish she was still in the series. Yeah, because ultimately what happens is he was turned against his will and sold. Yeah. To by the, the... He was sold by the Alpha in Chicago to, like, a mercenary yeah. group. And... Yeah. I wish that he hadn't been... I don't like that. Well... Um, well I, like I like. Well, I don't. I, I don't mind that, happened, that, that happened to him. <laughs> I don't know I why don't I said that. that. that to I, don't, him. I don't mind that it happened to him because he's in the book, and I like that. It's just sad because yeah. you're like, oh, it is sad. Um, because he's, he's a really book killed. Yeah, and he's such a well fleshed out character. Like in the first two chapters, you're like, I want to see what's going to happen to him because he's a brand new wolf and he needs help. So she's going to take him to Adam. Because Adam's the local yeah. alpha and he can help him. And it just kind of sucks because, like, within the first two chapters, you're like, I want to see more of him. And it would have been so interesting to watch him over the next couple of years of the books grow up and, like, become a full fledged werewolf. And it would have been interesting to actually see that process. Yeah. And I and wish it, you're Sorry. already kind of protective of him as well. Like from like a, probably after at the very worst, his second scene, you kind of like, or maybe, oh, this also could just be me being incredibly hormonal, <laughs> but uh, I was just like, I, I I I want him to be okay, and he needs to be. You know, I just wanted him protected. I wanted him, everything to go okay. Yeah, not like just you actually being... get attached to him. He's so he's very well established, Yo. and then he's so he sweet. Dies right away, and I'm like, Yo. no, why? I don't like it. I like it's, it's still. It's one of my least favorite things about the series. I want him to be alive. And like even in the ninth book, I'm still like, why did you have to kill? Like you didn't have to do that. There was no need no. for it. You could have made him a, a really like you spent so much time getting me attached to a character, and you just murdered him for no reason. Like there's no good plot reason why he should. No, the like they could the have the entire rest. Of the book Sorry, could have worked. Sorry, the entire rest of the book could have worked with him being yeah. that badly injured. He was in a coma. Just saying. Or it could have been that they shot him and he got away in random Mercy's trailer and was like, Adam's fucked up. Help. And they could have had him heal over the rest of the book. Because, like, he didn't really need to be in the rest of that book. Um, And I don't mind that he wasn't in it. I just mind that he was dead in it. Yeah, because I want more out of that character, and I still do. And I'm like, can you please resurrect him? Because I like him. Um, Even if, like, she had left him with Bran to heal and all that, that would have made sense. And then he was like, and then Bran's like, do you want to go back to the Tri-Cities or something? And he's like, sure. And then you're like, yay, great. There's there's just so many things you could have done with him. And yeah. I don't think it was necessary to kill him. And I'm sad that she did it because he was a really good character. And like I said, I'm nine books in and I'm still upset about it. So prepare to have your fucking heart ripped out. Cause it's not fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> after, so like basically he comes to her garage and then over the next couple of days, she's like, okay, gotta do this thing with Adam and like 
tell him about the wolf. So yeah. one day she goes home, and then she's going to go out and get food. But she's like, oh, shit, I left my purse in the safe. So now we got to go back to the gar- to the garage. And yeah. in the garage, and like she gets there, and there are... Oh, we didn't talk about Stefan. We'll get to Stefan. Um, <laughs> they're at the garage, and he's sitting in Stefan's van. And Stefan is a van. <laughs> and the van is painted like a mystery machine. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing at how in like the second book he's got a life-size Scooby-Doo in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. He does have a life-size Scooby-Doo in there. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> so Stefan's in Sorry. Uh so yeah, he's a life size Scooby Doo. Anyway, um and so Mac is sleeping in the van and the people who kidnapped him and did drug experiments on him are there and they're like, Come on, kid, you gotta come with us, man. Which is how it's read. By the way, if you listen to the audiobooks, I'm used to her voice now, but her voice is, is like it's hard to listen to. <laughs> would, would you agree? Um, probably because I've listened to audiobooks with um much worse voices, like yeah. um the Shifters series by mm-hmm. Rachel Vincent, the chick that oh god, she sounds like a forty-year-old woman reading for a twenty-two-year-old. Yeah, and it's just. Uh, I can't, I can't. So this one, I adjusted pretty quick. Yeah, I did too. When you have to read it in front of, sorry. I was going to say, because when you have to listen to like a sex scene read out by a woman that sounds like she's middle-aged, you adapt pretty quickly to narrators. Yeah, um, because like I was listening to it, my mom walked in, I I was just listening to it in front of my mom um, for whatever reason, and she was like, oh my God. (laughs) <laughs> what happened to her voice? Her voice is just very scratchy and whatever. Um, so Wait. just be aware of that. It's it's a, it, you adjust it, to it, but it is what it is. Um, is it a Joy Sparkles b- bad voice or a Dinah Waitress in the sixties who smokes bad voice? Dinah Waitress in the sixties who smokes. Deaf. The voice is very scratchy. Yeah. Joy um, Sparkles. There is no getting used to that voice. There are other sex scenes in the series much later. <laughs> in book four is the first sex scene. Yeah. If you don't count. I, I, w- I was referring to a different series, but yes. Yeah. If you don't count rape, then the first sex scene is in the fourth book. <laughs> and the, the rest of the, the sex scenes in this book are, you know, when we get there, we'll, we'll get there. Um, But, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, because um, I'm not even there yet, so. Yeah, so. <laughs> um. So, yeah, so the wolves are there. And so there's, like, a werewolf and a, a human saying, like, hey, Mac, we gotta, like, gotta take you back, bro. And he's, like, I, like, don't want to go because, like, you did, like, a, you, you, like, pumped trunks into me, man. And they're, like, yeah, <laughs> it's okay. And he's, like, but I just, I don't know, dude. And Mercy ends up killing <laughs> a werewolf. And, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I think that's a pretty accurate description of how it goes goes down. And so she kills a werewolf and saves Mac from people. Um, and then they drag the body into her garage to hide it. And then she calls Adam and she's like, I just killed a werewolf. All right, bye. And it's <laughs> which is funny <laughs> because she knows that it'll get Adam to the garage faster. Which I thought, I mean, I laughed. Um, and then Elizabeth, which is Adam's like cleanup witch. Witchy poo. Yeah, comes around yeah. and like cleans up and starts cleaning up. So there's that. Um, yeah, I think like so ultimately, because she never actually fully describes what, how the witch cleans up, but it, more, more or less it seems to me like the witch just removes all traces of blood and anything that could be forensically used, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Um 
And so Adam gets there, and Mac is uh, freaking out because one dead werewolf, you know, what are you going to do? Um, secondly, <laughs> uh, he wants to, I don't there's no good way to put this. He wants to eat the dead body. Like, he really, like, werewolves eat meat, and he, there's a massive slab of meat, and he wants it. Um, it's so, it's weird. Yeah, because he, cause he's, I guess because he's new, and he's also been kind, while, while Mercy has realized that, you know, he's, he, he needs food, and she's been trying to, you know, keep him full. Um, yeah, he was probably pretty hungry. Right. And so yeah. Adam gets there, and Adam, like, takes care of the situation, and that's pretty much that. Then Adam takes him home, and that night um, there are a bunch of people that come attack Adam's house. They badly injure Adam, and they kidnap Jesse, kidnap his, his daughter. daughter. And kill, yeah, and kill Mac, um, and, kill Mac. and they and they dump Mac on Mercy's doorstep. So there's a dead Mac. So Mercy puts Mac into her van and goes and gets Adam, and Adam's all injured. And at some point, there's like something that Daryl says in the book that makes Mercy like, I don't think I can trust the pack. And so instead of calling anybody in the pack, um, <clears throat> she takes him to Montana because yeah. I Adam don't know Mon why she didn't call Warren. Well, that's something that I thought about later. Um, like I said, the plot is murky as hell in the first book. And I don't even know if I'm going to be able to give a super great synopsis of it because it is so muddy and there are so many red, there are like five red herrings in this book yeah i will say though that she did end up having an another and i think that this is a pretty sound reason to also be concerned about it being at least partially an inside job which is jesse was taken from her bedroom yeah and the scent of the person that took her literally just went straight up to her room and left. Like, there was no searching. There was n Like, they knew exactly where they were going. And it was yeah. a human, so they couldn't smell Jesse. <laughs> so, so she takes him to Montana, and yeah. that's where we meet Samuel. <laughs> and essentially, they kind of look over Adam while he heals. The other thing is that Adam is a really dominant werewolf. In all of North America, it goes, the hierarchy goes, Bran... Charles, Sam, Adam. So in order for somebody to, like, help you while you're in a werewolf craze, you need a more dominant wolf than you are. And there aren't any for Adam except for Charles, Samuel, and Bram. Yeah. So... She takes him to Montana, and that's where we meet Samuel, and Samuel's a dick and calls her stupid the first time. And this was, and like, Samuel's where the first... stepmother tries to kill her. Right. <laughs> and this was where the first inconsistency happened, I think, um, when it came to yeah. Adam and Murphy's relationship. Because Adam bitches at Samuel for being mean to Mercy. And given their established relationship... You can agree that Mercy is a good person and would probably do something to help somebody who's like dead, especially since he, he she likes his daughter. Mm -hmm. But it's very odd that Adam like jumps to her defense like that, given the relationship that's been established. It doesn't make yeah, a whole lot of sense. I think I kind of wrote that off as um like. Adam and Mercy's relationship being quite, again, very surface level, you know, but there's also something there. And Adam isn't actually ever outright mean to That's Mercy. That's true, too. Whereas what, whereas what Samuel said to her was very mean. So I think that could be part of it. I don't... 
Yeah, that's fair enough. Like I said, it's just, it's a little mm. inconsistent with the way that they did it. Um, oh, I think there's also, we forgot to mention this. Um, in the second book, this gets expanded on, but from the first book's perspective, it it's to make sure she doesn't get killed by the rest of the pack or whatever, because she's a coyote living in wolf pack territory. But Adam has declared her his mate to the pack, even though they ain't a thing. Right. The other thing is that Bran um, told Adam to watch over Mercy. Yeah, which is then why we like that. And that kind of explains why he did that. Or at least you think it does, but again, it gets expanded. Yeah, and that's why he lives behind her. Yeah. So it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's all just... Yeah. Their relationship is very rocky. Like, it, it, or bipolar, not rocky. Yeah, and it's, yeah. like I said, it's just because the way she establishes it and then... She consistently doesn't go with what she established, if that helps. Um, <laughs> but she establishes yeah. him as, like, an antagonist. And then she's like, never mind. And you're like, eh, 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 okay. Um, okay. And whenever uh, – so then, like, they, they kind of, whatever, like, patch him up. And then they take him back to uh, the Tri-Cities in Washington because – he, um, he, like, he's got to go get Jesse, and they're, the, ugh, the tension in the van all the way back is so fucking irritating, because you have two guys, two dominant werewolves who want to bone Mercy, and they're just, like, <sighs> bitching at each other the whole time. Adam's not as bitchy or as petty as Samuel. But it was I know, irritating. honestly. The thing that pissed me off was, like, and, like, at, <coughs> sorry. Um, Samuel was getting a little bit too close to Mercy for Adam's comfort. Um, and because, like, also instinctually it's just, like, oh, woman, you know, dominant yeah. pissing contest crap starts happening. Um, and because when wolves are healing, they're a lot more temperamental and a lot more or a lot less in control of their emotions. Yeah. And Adam politely said, like, he asks, he doesn't even, he, he's not even a dick about it. He's just like, look, I'm really struggling to m control myself, so can you please just, you know, you know, He's pretty much like, can we like both respect her space? Respect like, her space. Please. Yeah. And Samuel like starts feeling her up, and, and she's driving, like, and she, yeah, yeah. And she what a pulls dick. over, and she gets Sam out of the car to yell at him. And it's so stupid, and it's one of the reasons why I fucking hate Samuel. Like, I just, er, I want him to go away. <laughs> It's helpful that they yeah. have him because he's a doctor and in later books it's like they kind of need a doctor for things. But fuck, it's annoying. Um, so they get back and then what even happens next? Um, they go to Warren's because it's like we need somewhere safe to go. Oh, let's go to Warren's. And it's like, well, why didn't you think of that yesterday? Oh, that's right as well. They had to go. She had to go there because she needed a more dominant wolf. That's right. Yeah, that's true. Only um, a more dominant wolf could keep and him so, in check. And so essentially, they're like, "Do you have a wolf you can trust that isn't like in line to be alpha?" And Warren's gay, so he's not going to become alpha because nobody would be into that. Um, so they go to Warren's, <laughs> and which is where you meet Kyle. And then Mercy ends up telling Kyle that Warren's a werewolf because it's causing tension in their relationship. Because if Warren tells Kyle. Uh, Adam will have to kill Warren because orders. So that's a thing that happens. And they end up breaking up over it, but they <laughs> get back together. So that's that. Um, and, and then they're like, we need to know where all this is. And so essentially what you have to do if 
you go into a city and there's vampires and you're a supernatural creature. So you have to pay the vampires something every month. You pay them like well, money they every month. You. Or they bother you. Um, and so one of Z's fae friends works at a bank and noticed <laughs> interesting bank activity. Okay, cool. So then she calls Stefan, who's a vampire. And Stefan's a vampire. He's from Italy. He has an Italian accent, so he's basically Stefan from the Vampire Diaries. He's also whiny and weird. And he turns the love triangle into a love square. And just fucking kill me now. Um... <laughs> I don't like love squares. It's even worse than love triangles. I know. Um, at least, at least you can. At least they set mercy up as someone who you can imagine having multiple suitors. Whereas, like in other series, it's like, why do so many people like this person? Why? <laughs> Thank you, Peter. It's fucking dumb. Oh, good boy, oh. Peter. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> Sorry. Um. <laughs> But so <laughs> yeah. Um, oh god. Sorry, I just read Mag Bastards. <laughs> Only four more needed to turn the love square into a love shack. <laughs> uh fortunately no other suitors pop up, which is like thank fuck, but oh, thank and the fuck. second thing isn't really expanded on, and honestly it doesn't need to happen. Because no he's in love with her and that's established. And I'm like, their relationship could be the exact same if they were just good friends. Yeah. There's no reason for this anyway. Um, <laughs> so they have to go to Stefan's sieve to get the address from Marsilia, which is the mistress of the sieve. So they go which and they go with of vampires. Yeah. And then there's a vampire called Lily and she's basically a bipolar ditz. And she nibbles on Samuel without anybody noticing. So Samuel is like all in, he, they call it in thrall. Um, yeah, how, uh, one thing I'm really confused about is how the fuck did, okay, we, we'll excuse, we'll, we'll excuse Miss a, like Mercy for not realizing because quite often she actually does go, oh crap. I, I even though I had the capability of smelling or hearing or whatever that I didn't because I don't pay attention to jack shit. So yeah. I can excuse her. How the fuck did Stefan, a vampire, not know that he was bleeding? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Because, like, he's, he's, he's genuinely surprised when he realized, oh, Samuel got a cutty. So then, basically, like, Marsilia likes to... So Marsilia is from Milan, and she got exiled from Milan because she kept snacking on werewolves, and she kept causing problems. It's not that, like, s snacking on werewolves is bad. It's just, like, she did it badly. It's more... It, it's explained later. Um... So she got exiled to... She snacked on the wrong one. What? Oh, yeah. She, it, she snacked on the wrong one. one. Yeah, she snacked on one that was, like, important. And they were like, ah, Marcilia, why would you do that? Okay, bye. And so <laughs> now she's in Washington. Um, <laughs> and this is, like I said, when you actually talk about the plot, you're like, wow, this is convoluted as fuck. But when you're reading it, it's good. Um, so yeah, give it, don't like, realize. Don't be discouraged. It's a, it's a really good series, and the first two books are. The second book is probably my least favorite of the series, and after that is the first book when it comes to least favorites. But I just want to say, like that's like saying that a Zelda there, that there, you have like a least favorite Zelda game. It doesn't mean a lot, like. It's basically the other ones are magic, and these are like good. Make sense? Anyway, um, so, so they have to run away with no, sorry, with no um, address. So then somebody comes along later and is like, "Hey, Mercy, here's the address," and you're like, "All right, great." Um, 
So then they get the address. And I forget who gives, who gives her the address. I don't even fucking remember. I don't know. That, that's, Is it that's Stefan? That's probably why I'm letting you. Um, no, 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 no. It, it's, it's, pirate, it's pirate shirt guy. Isn't it? He's a pirate Andre, shirt guy? I don't think so. Oh, it no, he, but he comes... Yes, yeah, they get the address. <laughs> they get the fucking address where everybody is. Um, and and like I said, the vampires know the address because they were like, sup, bloodsuckers, here's $10,000, here's where we're staying, bye. So the vampires give her the address. And then Samuel and Adam and Peeps, and Peeps are like, uh... Hey babe, uh, we're gonna go and you're gonna stay here. And she's like, ah, fine. So she does. And then a day passes and she's like, it's weird that they haven't called me. Um, and it's kind of dumb that they haven't fucking called her because, like, Adam gets captured, which is that's why he didn't call her. But Samuel isn't captured, so why wouldn't he call her and say, "Hey, tits, what's up? Uh, update." Adam's captured, the rest of us aren't, and we're doing shit. So she calls Bran, and she's like, hi, Bran, here's my theory about what's happening. And her theory is all wrong, by the way. Um, sort of. It's fucking bizarre. So this makes me sound like I don't like it, but and I do like the book. It's just like when you try to lay out the plot, you're like, this is a fucking... Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how this made sense in her head. Like, I would need her to explain it to me because even by the end, because I was wondering if I just wasn't paying enough attention the first time I listened to it, and that's why the plot was so confusing to me. But now, yeah. actually trying to tell you what the plot is, I'm like, I'm struggling to tell you what the plot is because there are so many fucking moving parts. Because we, we, we still got new characters to introduce here. <laughs> like, that's, it's, it's, it's not over yet. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. So she calls Bran and she's like, Bran, what's up, bro? Uh, your son hasn't fucking called me. Um, so then she goes home and then there's like a big ass black dude there who's Adam's army buddy. And he's like, hey, we're mercenaries. We like help, we like helped attack his house, but like we didn't think that like this was like gonna happen, yo. So we're gonna help you save him. And she's like, woohoo, to the rescue. So she finally gets a hold of Samuel. <laughs> And Samuel's like, "Stop, tit. Sorry, I didn't call you. Uh, Adam's been captured for a while. Uh, I guess we should save him." So they go to save him, <laughs> and, and she sneaks in first. And she sneaks in first, and they have like turncoat agents in the thing so that she can get in. Um, and they don't waste her time with like getting in or anything. So like she gets in, like do a guard and rotation. Falls asleep. And if they, she gets there, she unties Jesse. The rest of it's not really, the details aren't that important. She unties Jesse and uh, she unties Adam and then they get him out. And then the whole finale happens and he gets out in the A. Um, and the plot wraps up with, how do I even fucking explain this? Help. I don't even well, know how to explain they, it. Okay, so okay, so in the alphas, like the, the is it Morocco? I'm yeah. forgetting pronunciations. Yeah, in the Morocco's pack, um, well, not in the pack, but in his town, there's a vet, and that dude got cancery and decided to turn. Um, because his son is in was in the Alpha's pack and pressured him into it, um, and he didn't want to he didn't want to embrace his wolf or anything like that. So he developed a tr tranquilizer that works effectively. No, see, they, they actually on... say that it's the son that develops it. They don't actually clear up who's. Oh, the, yeah, oh you know. okay. Well, that's really confusing. It's then. Fucking confusing. Okay. I thought he... um, regardless, the son. It turns out his son is the one that bought Mac and is behind all of this crap. And part of it is because he knows that his dad just needs to let his wolf take over just once and he'll be fine. And so, so they he fight. In, 
Yep. So he had to kidnap. He had to kidnap Adam and have everything point to him. So then that way, Adam, um, and Bran and what well, Adam would get Bran's permission to kill him or something. So then that way, his dad would be very cranky and have to challenge Bran to like to a fight and embrace his wolf and then he was going to have a witchy poo help his dad win the fight and kill Bran um not because he hated Bran just because he he needed a reason for his dad to fight right because there's no other wolf that could have been like hey grr and then fight it's fucking it's yeah you know what the plot in this book is stupid it's a really it's still 4.5 stars but the plot's stupid um it's written amazingly <laughs> it's it's amazing. Like like I said, when I reread it, I was like, you know, I think I wasn't paying enough attention when I first read it, and then I re-listened to it, and I'm like, no, it doesn't make any more sense now than it did. Um, <laughs> so that's basically the plot. Yeah. Um, oh, and then and then because um, yeah, his dad was on the verge of being put down by um, Bran because. Wolves that don't learn how to be wolves get deaded. And yeah. because he was refusing to merge his human half with his wolf half, he was becoming more dangerous. So they had to he dead couldn't him. actually. Yeah, because yeah, the alpha couldn't control him because he wasn't. Well, the one. alpha could. He just he couldn't learn how to control himself. So oh, happened. sorry. Well, the alpha couldn't help him. Yeah, right. The alpha yeah, couldn't yeah. help himself. So, and then his son gets killed by Samuel right then and there because he did a bad. Um, and then the dad doesn't yeah. know that Sam, that his son did a bad. Um, and one of Elizaveta's grandsons, clean up witchy, um, is helping him. And yeah. Plot so fucking convoluted. Uh, oh, and, and, then, and we discover that Mercy is at least partially immune to magic. Yeah, that's a thing, by the way. Um, and she's partially pretty much immune to vampire magic, too. Yeah. So, and then at the end of the book, she and Adam go on a date, and then when you get done with the date... And they do a smooch. And they do a smooch, and then you get done with the date, and then she's like, oh, hey, Sam, will you live here now? And you're like, fucking kill me. Um... And, and then it ends. <laughs> and then it ends. And then it starts off in the first book, like, the next summer. So this one takes place over the week of Thanksgiving. So starting basically that Monday, running through to the next Monday. And then, like, the next book takes place, like, in the summer. Or early, yes. late spring, early summer of the next year. And yes. she and Adam went on three dates, and she gets scared and stops dating him and starts avoiding him. So there's that. Um, and that's pretty much the plot. <laughs> Convoluted yeah. as fuck. And Jesse ends up moving in with Dad. Yeah. Uh, Peter asked, did they do the sex? No. Not yet, Peter. Not yet. I'm and, assuming it's them that does the sex later. Ugh, kill me. I remember when right. you read that scene. <laughs> and I was messing with you and I was like, Babe. What the fuck? <laughs> Kill me. You were um, so cranky with the sex scene. I know, I totally was. It was bad, but when we get to it, we'll get to it. I'm going to read it for you guys because it was bad. Um, <laughs> so bad. Um, okay, so stuff that we don't like. Let's get into that. Okay, I'm, I'm going to start off with a small one. Okay. And it's about Jesse's mom. Okay. Because at the end, um, Adam tells Jesse's mom, stupidly he tells Jesse's mom that, you know, oh, by the way, I um, our daughter got a kidnapped and, you know, got punched in the face by a werewolf and, you know, was at, potentially at risk of getting raped by random wolfy men. And, um, yeah, but please let me, you know, continue to look after her because we got her home safe. And mom was like, you get put her on a plane back right now, rah, rah, rah. And then 
Jesse's like, oh, mom, what about, you know, your boyfriend that tried to rape me when I was 12? And what about the time that you neglected me and went overseas or whatever for fucking two weeks and left me at home alone and stuff? I'm like, did they have to make her mom trailer trash? Like, she couldn't have just been a bitch. Did they have to make a trailer trash? Um, I didn't like that. Yeah, I don't mind it, actually, because... I, I, I think Patricia Briggs is obse- a bit obsessed with rape. She's, she makes yeah. everything very rapey. Yeah, she's a little obsessed with rape. Um, I, I don't mind it, to be honest, because I don't like Christy. She shows up in the seventh book. Yeah. She's a bitch. Yeah. Um, I, you know, and honestly, was- she manages to be a caricature, but a believable one. Yeah. Because while you're like, she's a, she's enough. They, she's not a, she's a caricature, but she's not so much of one that like you don't believe it. You probably know somebody like Christy, um, but. Yeah, yeah, I didn't mind that because I like Jesse and I want her around. So it just oh yeah, I just that could have been. I don't know. I, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but sorry, the main contention, I guess, we should get into. Yeah. So the wolves are set up very patriarchally, <laughs> and the entire time. There's always, and this is like a theme throughout the fucking series, and it drives me up a goddamn wall. Where Mercy's <laughs> like, they're still in the Stone Age. They haven't come to the 21st century when it comes to women. And you're just like, ugh. <laughs> right? You're like, ugh, I don't care. And then she's like, and it's she, so backwards. She seems to find because- any excuse for it. She's like, it's so backwards because the females take that position from their mates. And you're just like, I don't give a shit. And if you were going to complain about it, why did you make it that way? Like, I just, ugh. And then later so she the could series, make a point. And then later in the series, she does a thing where she's like, Mercy challenged the hierarchy of the pack. But it's fucking stupid because what Mercy says is, um, Arielli is higher than this person because of mating. And she's not making a point or challenging how the pack is set up. She's pointing it out. But then in the rest of the series, she's like, this female wolf doesn't like me because I challenged the pack structure. And she didn't. (laughs) She didn't do that. She was just like, you know, females take their ranks from their mates, by the way. And everybody's like, what? And I'm like, why would that be shocking? Like, Arielli is literally... Why is it... Pack because she's made it to. Sorry. Yeah, and I don't understand as well why they why they be so. Like it, this isn't news. Like she's the second most powerful person in that pack, and she's not even a fucking werewolf. Because she's with Adam. And it's dumb because they establish that they take their mate from their spouse, and then in one book, Mercy's like, you know. Since they take their mate from their spouse, or their since they take their, their mate from their spouse, their fuck rank. my life, um, their rank from their mates, <laughs> she's like, so this is her rank. And the wolves are like, what? And you're like, you know this. How dare you? You're like, you know that this is a thing. Why are you so shocked? What's wrong with you? Um, <laughs> but you know, that. That's and it, but it's crammed down our fucking throat. Like, seriously, she'll find any excuse to criticize the fact that women aren't treated the same as men. And like, like I've I lost count of the amount of time she said, "Luckily for you know, luckily for me, I'm not a wolf, and therefore I can be as you know." strong independent woman as I want to be. And it's like annoying. She, oh, it's so yeah. annoying. Yeah. Like and, I said, and this is not uncommon amongst authors to cram a feminist message down your throat. 
and it is so annoying. I don't care. I will know that you're a strong, independent woman if you just act like it. Well, and that's the thing. That's why I can't hate her, because she also does act like it. Yeah, it's not enough to, for, for me to not like the series, but it is enough for every time it pops up for me to be like... I really... <sighs> Yeah. And then the love triangle. The yeah. love triangle's stupid. Stupid. All love triangles are stupid. Stupid. Because the thing is, like, Adam is a very masculine man. And it annoys me when you have a yes. character that's supposed to be masculine and you have him stuck in a triangle. There is nothing more beta bitchy as fuck than a guy in a love triangle. I know. If you get been... caught in a love triangle, you're a bitch. That's all there is to it. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate love triangles. Um, no bastard. No. No. If they make a film adaptation of the book, they can get Emma Watson to play Mercy. No, because guess what? Emma Watson likes to just talk about, you know, feminism and that's about it. Mercy is like, like I said, one of the things that makes her, makes it be more of an eye roll as opposed to what I want to slaughter this author is the fact that Mercy backs up her own views with her actions. So Emma Watson isn't strong enough to play Mercy. That was my point. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> Fuck, I ramble a lot. <laughs> no, it's okay. So, yeah. Um, overall, it's a good book. There, like I said, once you actually try to talk about it, you're like, oh, actually, good point. It would also be whitewashing. Oh, yeah, that's true. Be. Yeah, she is a half woo. Um. I don't think there's anything else. Uh, well, will you be able to do the? Well, we, do you think you can finish Bloodbound today? Um. Or would it matter? Oh yeah, like I, by the time it's like tomorrow, it'll be Monday for you guys. Yeah, it'll be Monday. Your tomorrow will be Monday for me. Um. So, but, like, I've only got maybe about an hour listening of Bloodbound left. But I could do it. So, yeah, if, if you, you can fit to, it into your it. tonight. Yeah, I could. that's what I was about to say. Um, I'll ha that. Yeah, I'll have to see, though, because I don't know if I'll be – I don't know what Sticks is up to tomorrow. So, because um, he's been working some Sundays lately. Yeah. So I don't know if um, I will have a spawn or not. Yeah, we'll just see if we can fit it in, because if we can fit it in, then we can start working on a shitty book. <laughs> Someone that. suggested something earlier. Fuck, what was it? Um, Anita Brooks, uh, I think. Blake? Blakey? Anita Blake, there we go. Anita Blake. What's that one? Yeah, I'll look it. I read it down. I wrote it down. Um. Anita Blake we'll Vampire so, Hunter. Yeah, so we'll look into that too. Um, anyway, like I said, if you guys have any suggestions for some crappy books or even a good series that you want us to read, let us know. Um, if you want to see what my writing's like, part one of the Volk Saga is in the description, and you can go read it. And 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 it's another like Amaze Balls MC. Just saying. So. And I'm not just saying that because I love you. Like, I actually. Uh, yeah, people He's who are not my me. like my best friend like it. So, just saying. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so, thank you guys for yeah, watching. There's no uh, point. <laughs> we'll probably do, we'll probably talk about Bloodbound either tonight or some other time, depending, my tonight, your tomorrow, depending on. Yeah, we'll. Probably after the mainstream, which is on my channel tonight. So hopefully we'll see you guys then. And fingers crossed. Uh, yeah. So bye guys. Yeah.